Hey, good day, brothers and sisters. This is Anthony Moore for Your Money More from the Freedmen Descendants of Chicago, formerly known as ADOS Chicago. And today, specifically as it relates to us, U.S. descendants of chattel slavery, in other words, U.S. descendants of freedmen, we, we need to have a talk with our elders. And, we're going to, and we are going to relate it to the 1619 Rapid Relief Executive Order that we are pushing our multi-billionaire Democratic governor in Illinois to sign. JB, I wouldn't be governor without the black vote Prescott because what we are going through is a textbook example of what we as black people who have descended from U.S. chattel slavery are subjected to all across this nation where our vote, where our political capital is taken for granted more than you can take for granted that it is going to be cold during winter in Chicago. Because our vote and our political capital has been colonized, conquered, and compromised like that of no other racial group, of no other ethnic group. And as a result, we don't get fair exchange for our vote, for our political capital, which is one of the reasons why we persist in being this nation's bottom caste intended to be its permanent underclass. And so, elders, we got to have a talk with y'all because the natural order of things is for elders to advise and teach younger folks because... With age, the standard thinking is that with age comes wisdom. With age comes lessons that you often learn the hard way from life's experiences. And I've learned a lot from elders. So I definitely have realized the benefit the benefit of elders sharing wisdom. However, for one thing, even though the natural and ideal trajectory is for people to get wiser as they get older, sometimes it comes down to what somebody told me, which is some people, they don't get wiser. They just age. <laughs> right? So even though ideally with age should come wisdom, that's not the case all the time. And here is another thing. Even when people, elders in particular, are, are wise in certain regards, they are not wise in everything. Because there are certain things. That's why it's important. The same way that elders, the same way that younger folks, it really is, it really is supposed to go both ways. Younger folks are supposed to learn from elders in certain regards. And elders are supposed to learn from younger folks in other regards because there are certain things that elders could teach the young, but there are other things that the young could teach the elders. And I think this is one of those things, the things that I am going to discuss today, the things that we are going to address right now is one of those things where the elders need to listen to the younger folks. And so I'm going to break it down and I'm going to break down and I'm going to, and we're going to break it down in the context of this governor, JB, I wouldn't be governor without the black vote Prisker here in Illinois, what went down and how it's a microcosm and a textbook example of what it is for us all throughout this nation when it comes to our political capital being taken for granted like no other group. And let's see if any of the elders can make a case for themselves and dispute what it is that I am about to communicate. Now, in the 2018 election for governor, the, for governor in Illinois in the Democratic primaries. So we're not even talking about the Republicans because one of the reasons why one of, one of the key reasons why the black vote is taken for granted is because most of our elders, most of our older folk believe in the mentality of voting blue no matter who. And notice, I am not saying vote for Republicans because guess what? Both the Republicans and the Democrats in this current apparatus, in this current construct are horrible and terrible. And I've been a registered Democrat all my life and I voted in every government election that's been applicable to me, city, state, federal, general, primary, and I've not voted for a Republican one time. Now, 
Why do I bring that up? Because anytime, and check out my video where I talk about nuance, why go more in depth into this concept. But see, we live in a propagandized society, and the powers that be want to want to limit critical thinking, which they often do very effectively. So anytime somebody who is black is criticizing the Democrats, they automatically want to label you one as a person who don't vote, which isn't true about me, or one as a Republican. Never voted for a Republican one time. And I don't pay and I don't plan on and there, and there's a and, and here one of the reasons now I'm more of an independent, but in Illinois, as it is as is the case in other states, when you register in a primary you can only vote for the candidates that that are in the party that you register for. In other that you register for. In other words, Democrats, registered Democrats can only vote for the Democratic candidates in the primary. Registered Republicans can only vote for the Republican candidates in the primary, and registered Independents can only vote for Independent candidates in the primary. And it is for that reason that most people don't run as independent when they probably otherwise would, because they know the majority of the people in this in, in the state of Illinois are either Democrats or Republicans. So they they already know that if they run as independents, the most of the voters are not going to be able to vote for them even if they want to. So if it wasn't for that dynamic, I would be a, a rest a independent because I'm also independent. But with that being said, I'm going to be a registered Democrat in this upcoming primary that we have taking place next month. So I've never voted for a Republican one time, even though I voted in every single government election that's been applicable to me on the city, state, federal level, general primary. And, I, and I'm not going to vote for a Republican in this upcoming election because I'm, I will be a registered Democrat who won't even be eligible to vote for the Republicans. So let's kill that because the, because with me being critical in the, of the Democratic Party in a very real, much-needed way, the first thing they, they will try to do is make me lose credibility by saying I'm this and I'm that because they already know they got people, the way they got us programmed in this society, where if you were, we were, he's a Republican, so we can't listen to nothing he said about the criticism of the Democrats. He's, he, he, he's a Republican, so we got to tune out what he say just as if a Republican couldn't have a valid criticism about the Democrats. But that only, that's not applicable to me anyhow. So we don't even have to go there. But let's break this down. In the 2018 primary election for governor in Illinois, where the Democrats went against each other to choose who will be the Democratic, the Democrat candidate in the main election for governor, who will run against the then incumbent Bruce Rodner, another white male billionaire, or at least close to it. Bruce Rodner, the rep incumbent Republican Bruce Rodner, who I call Bruce, I don't care nothing about the poor or working class Rodner. Also, super rich, just like Prisca. Now, not, 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 now, not as rich as Prisca, and that's probably where Prisca got the idea to buy his way into office, just like Bruce Rodner had bought his way into office because he probably figured, hell, this this Republican bought his way to be governor into Illinois. I'm even richer than him. So the same way he bought his way into office as a Republican, hell, I'll buy my way into office as an even richer Democrat, which was exactly what he did. Because Bruce Rodner, just one year, just in one year alone, when he was governor of Illinois, he made over $100 million in passive passive income. And it's been plenty of other years where he's made tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. But going back to the Democratic primary, see, the, so we ain't even talking about the Republicans because they run that same game time and time again on us by design. Oh, you can't vote for the And the Republicans, by and large, are horrible and terrible and outright scary. I understand that. But this works for the Democrats because they, and they do that intentionally because they fear my goes, oh, you can't vote for them horrible, terrible, terrible Republicans. But we got to have faith, not fear, because this paradigm isn't working. So here's the thing. In that primary, there was another case where J.B. Prisco, where J.B., I wouldn't be governor without the black work Prisco was, was, was running in. There was another candidate. There were several candidates, but there was one candidate in particular, a, a guy named Daniel Biss, who is now mayor of Evanston, which is a college town right outside of Chicago, which is where Northwestern University is located. Now, he came, Dan Ubis came from privilege as well, went to elite schools. 
However, at least he wasn't a multi-billionaire that come from a multi-billion dollar dynasty that date back damn near 100 years. Prisca's fortune dates back at least to the first half of the 1900s. And I don't have nothing personal against Prisca because I don't... Hey, he might be a cool guy to hang out with, but guess what? It's politics, and politics ain't personal as they show us time and time and time and time again. But black people who are by large, who are by and large working class throughout Illinois, just like throughout this entire United States of America, now, Daniel Biss, and like I said, well, I didn't say this, but Daniel Biss, he would have had to come with a black agenda before I could support him, but he came from a much... He, for one, he had much more of a working class progressive platform than Prisca, and he had much more of a track record as a politician because he had a, he 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 was already like whereas Prisca had never served in political office a day in his life. Daniel Biss was actually a serving poli- I, I believe he was an Illinois state senator, but he was definitely in political office and had political experience at the time, and so he had much more of a progressive. Back, background and a progressive track record. And at least he wasn't a multi-billionaire who came from a multi-billion dollar dynasty where the only working class people he's ever known is, is those who work for him and his family. Unlike Prisca. And so in a, in a time where billionaires have, a, have an inordinate amount of power over our, over our political system, they are getting an, an inordinate amount of the wealth to the detriment of the masses, and more and more wealth is being consolidated in the hands of fewer and fewer people. More and more wealth is going to those who already got way more than they ever would need, who still strive to get more that they don't need at the expense of the masses getting enough of what they do need. So in an era where we should be questioning the whole notion of billionaires and the consolidation of wealth, you should be suspicious of any multi-billionaire who inherited all his money trying to buy his way into the governor's office, especially as a working class person, especially coming from a, from a family where his siblings inherited multi-billions of dollars. And like I said, they fortune date back to at least the first half of the 1900s, which means they have passed down wealth from generation to generation to generation to generation. In other words, they are in the business of preserving wealth. And this is, in the era, this is an era where we need to be redistributing wealth. And so, and then we, and, and then we, and, and it, and like I said, we are talking about a person who inherited their fortune. So we're not even talking about a person who may have been working class, may have even come from poverty, or at least, or even come from the middle class and became a billionaire. In other words, they can relate to middle class, working class people because at least they had that experience. No, we talking about a person who come from a multi billion dollar, multi generational diet. Di- Dynasty, who all he's ever known his whole life is wealth and privilege. And it'd be one thing if he had a track record of helping the working class, more specifically helping black people. But not only did he not have a track record of doing any damn thing for black people, hell, he didn't even have a track record of doing something for working class people in general. And so just looking at it on paper, then you best, even though, like I said, he still would have to come, as far as I'm concerned, he would have had to come with a black agenda. As Prisca should have had to come with a black agenda, as any candidate who won our vote should have to come with a black agenda. But just looking at it on paper, Daniel Biss was a much more relatable, sensible candidate than a multi-billionaire that inherited all this money. Nonetheless, working class black people, particularly our elders, got in line and voted for this multi-billionaire who ain't never did a damn thing for us, ain't never committed to doing a damn thing for us, ain't never gave us a reason to think that he would do a damn thing for us, and surprise, surprise, four years later, after he's been in office running for re-election, he still ain't done a damn thing for us, and he obviously doesn't plan on doing a damn thing for us, and that's what this 1619 Rapid Relief Executive Order is geared toward changing. But like I said, nonetheless, black people, especially elders, Voted for this multi-billionaire because the Democratic Party who don't give a damn about us told them to. How sick is that? How infantile is that? And y'all might get mad at me for saying it, but y'all need to get mad at them for treating us that way. That's like a per- that's like a female who's abused, and you say, man, that dude is abusing you. You need to get out, out of that abusive relationship because that guy has no 
right to abuse you. You deserve better. And she get mad at you for pointing out that she's being abused as opposed to getting mad at the abuser himself. That's the situation that we're in right here. But this is a new era, new day, new paradigm. And can any of the elders who voted for Prisca, can they say why they voted for Prisca? Why did you vote for Prisca? Answer these questions. Other than the fact that a, a, a democratic a machine, not, not just a democratic party, but a political machine, emphasize on machine, a political machine. And like I said, both the Republicans and the Democrats are terrible and horrible. So I'm not saying vote for I'm not saying I, we don't have no permanent interest. We only got permanent allies. I mean, we don't. We don't have no permanent allies. We only have permanent interests, and our permanent interest uh, is the well-being of one another. So, can anybody explain why they voted for this gentleman without him providing a black agenda? Without him having a track record that it would make sense to vote for him? I'm waiting. Feel free to comment. So, for more information on the 1619 Rap Relief Executive Order, which is about economic empowerment targeted toward black people with a focus on those of us who have descended from U.S. chattel slaves, getting our fair share of the three federal COVID bills and the infrastructure money with a reported $17 billion coming to Illinois and making sure the money is spent in specific and explicit ways that will, even if targeted us, will provide a degraded, will, will provide a return on investment to the state as a whole beyond us, which is what these politicians will be doing if they were about doing their job and were about serving the people, which we know these politicians in general, whether they're Democrat, Republican, or whatever, are not. So click the links below in, in, in the description box, including the link to the website for the executive order. It's hardbeingblack.info, named that the J.B. Prisca's pandering words when he was pandering to us, black folks, pandering versus policy, because that's the playbook for Negroes nationwide. Like, subscribe, click the notification bell. Like I said, comment. Let's go. Let's do things different so we can get different results.